Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome to my show where I help you build a career you love. Today we're gonna to talk about how to find your gift. And I've been wanting to do this one for a long time because I feel like so much of your happiness and success can come if you are living your gift. And I'm talking about offering this out to the world. So I wanna give you my formula that I used to get here today. Uh, so that we could be doing this. And I, let me tell you, it was not a, a, a straight line. There was nothing linear about it. It was quite the odyssey, but I am here today. So I'm hoping that will inspire you to put in the work and really manifest the gift to your gift to the extent that this world needs it. So I, I, I hope you enjoyed this one. I got a prescription for you today. It's going to be part how to, part motivation, and then I'm gonna stick a little maybe a one-line challenge in here at the end that uh, that I want you to think about and uh, hope, hopefully inspires you to get, to get rolling. Now, before we get into the here's how, I want to talk about a few concepts that I want you to think about as we go through today's today's talk. And it's going to be a, you know, a handful of points I'm going to make. But as I make these points, you know, I want you to think about something that I, I believe in, and I'm going to keep coming back to this, but I, I think your gift has been with you your entire life. And I think a lot of you have probably, you probably know what it is. And or maybe you've seen it, maybe you've ignored it, maybe you've suppressed it. Um, I, 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 know, I know I did. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of us, we you know, kind of wake up one day and we say, how the hell did I get here? I know I did that in my late 30s. You can count me in on that list of people that, that have done that. But I think as we go through this talk today, if you keep three things in mind, um, and, and, and I'm going to kind of talk to you about how to, how to, how to do this, but if you, if you are able to look far enough back into your, into your life, and I'm talking all the way back, all the way back, as far back as you can remember, or, and you can kind of step back from where you are today at any any moment in time your present moment if you can step back far enough to kind of look at yourself objectively and what you're doing and then i think the other thing is if you ask yourself the right questions and i mean really give the question a fair shake meaning you are actually answering it really thinking about it and i'm going to give you some of those today so i just i want you to think in that context as we kind of as we walk through you know as we walk walk through the talk so let's talk about that first one I mentioned about, about looking back in, in your life. And I'm, I'm in my early 50s, I'm 52, and I think about as I went back to my childhood. But, but the, thing, the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to look back and I want you to think about your whole evolution. So I don't care if you're 22 or 52 like I am or in your 70s, which you think back about your life. There's a common thread or a theme that permeates every single thing that you that you've done. It's there. It's there. And I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of take you through what I've gone through. You know, I think back to my childhood. You know, when I was in school and playing sports as as a youngster, and I thought about school, and I was a pretty good student, but I didn't really care about the subjects all that much. I mean, nothing really that I was learning in math and science and English and all that. None of that really you know, was I really taken with. But what I really enjoyed was helping the other students and, and, and kind of coaching them up and, and, and giving them some help and, and helping them see things. That made me feel great. Or when I was in sports, I played sports. It, it wasn't really, and I played a lot of different sports, but it wasn't really the sport itself that I loved. I loved kind of hanging out with my friends and teaching them my practice routines and how I would try to develop and get good at something. And that that to me was always fun. And then I got into college, and this is kind of where I, you know, I don't know if you want to call it a mistake, but instead of focusing and trying to think about what it was that I loved, and granted, you know, as a teenager, not a lot of us have evolved, but I studied what I was good at instead of what I loved. So I was good in math and science, so I thought I should be an engineering student. I was an electrical engineering student because I thought that was my path to a good job. So I studied that. I didn't much care about Ohm's Law, never have still don't to this day. And as I got through the schooling and I was about to embark on my professional career, one thing that I knew right away was I better not become an engineer. I'm not going to have a happy life. So I tried to pick something that I could, um, I could fo you know, focus on that would, would help 
me be a little more of me. I got into technology consulting. I I thought about, you know, hey, this ought to be pretty cool. I'll be able to help companies. I like that. I'll get to see some different things. I'll be able to help the clients and the people that I'll be working with and maybe maybe my teammates. So on I went, but you know, I didn't care much about technology consulting either. I always liked helping the people, helping my clients, helping the individuals that were on my team or my, in my unit. And that's what really drove me. Um, you know. And as I, you know, then I woke up, I was in my late 30s and I thought, how the hell did I get here? I, I don't even, I don't even like any of this stuff. So that's when I decided to become a recruitment from owner. I thought I'll take one step closer to helping people. And then a few years back, it was becoming a trainer. And now we can do this. And if I look back at my entire life, the one constant for me, I think my gift, me, is helping people and, and, and getting them to where they want to go, whether that's their job, their life, or however it may be, and to be able to teach them. And so that to me, I just, I was always drawn to, to that, and it was an element of what I was doing. Now, your gift, you don't have to make a wholesale change here. I mean, your gift can be elements of what you do, but you got to look far enough back to look and see what that common denominator is. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, and we'll talk about this because this is a confusing, this really, this one here, this is actually a confusing, confusing topic. I am not going to go and tell you to pursue your passion. Okay, I want you to be passionate about what you do, but I think passion in and of itself is not something that people really understand. When you think about passion and I think about energy, I like to focus on what energizes me. So if you look to see what really gives you that energy, let's talk about energy and passion here for a second. Nobody's born with passion, okay? We don't, I didn't like come out of mommy's womb and then all of a sudden I wanted to be a teacher or a trainer or a coach or whatever. No, you're born and between the time you were born and now, you were introduced to something or you found something or you encountered something that through repeated interaction with, you fell in love with and developed a passion for it. You might've enjoyed it almost instantaneously, but to develop a real passion is, some, is something that you need to be in touch with over and over again. But those things that energize you, that give you energy, and, and likely these will be one and the same, but you gotta think about focusing on what energizes you, which will lead you to your passions. And I think that one is something that takes a long time to develop, the other is something that you can see very easily. So make sure that you are looking at what gives me energy. What do I like to do? This, this gives me energy. There is no way I could even fake the fact that in a normal month for me, I am live about 20 hours between my free stuff and my paid stuff, okay? My paid coaching and my free coaching. You don't spend 20 hours in front of a camera with people because you don't like it. It gives me energy. I love to be connected with you. And then in that same vein, I think the other thing that you need to look at is you need to have... Take note of how it will positively impact others. So now think about this for a second. You've got something that you that energizes you and it gives you fuel and there's some internal motivation there because you love it. And then you think about the way it benefits others. That in and of itself is a great pull towards what your gift is. But imagine you've got your customers, your community, whoever it is that you're serving pulling you for that, asking you for more, giving you feedback that it's helping them. You think about this, this, this interaction, don't minimize when you put a nice comment on there on YouTube that says, hey, you really helped me. There is such a pull to keep me going. That goes a long way in helping you know, me refill my tank. So, so imagine that one-two punch. It internally energizes you and you've got the pull from from the people that you are serving, whoa, that is a phenomenal, phenomenal one-two combo. And then the other thing that I'd like to throw in for you is, is, is a little something that, um, that I work on with some of my job-seeking uh, folks. Uh, many of you, you probably know that I have a job search boot camp. It's a, it's a wonderful 
uh, jab search program and the first part of the program is about developing self-awareness and clarity understanding your why and what drives you and then making sure that you can test it so that it's substantiated but there's also an element of checking that you're on the right track and I give uh, the members seven uh, ob observations that they can make to know that just to cue them you are on the right track I want to give you one of those cues right now it's an external cue and that people around you are likely telling you you are great at it whether it's your customers the people you serve the um, the the community whoever it might be your friends your family your loved ones these people they see you differently than you see yourself sometimes we're our own worst critics we don't always recognize how good we are at something until somebody gives us a you know an outsider's perspective so i want you to pay attention kind of point number four is i want you to pay attention to that external feedback and what's and what's happening and what's happening so that 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 one there that's that's a that's a pretty good one that's a pretty good indication that you're on you're on the right track and then the other thing that i want you to keep in mind is and here's a question that i want you to ask yourself flat out question what kind of legacy do you want to leave what kind of legacy what do you want to be known for what do you want to be known for now i know that legacy is a funny thing right we all want to leave families the children the grandchildren and so on for sure i, I to totally get that but I'm talking, I'm not talking to everybody here, I'm talking to you. You're here with me now, you're either here with me live or you're here on the recording, and, and I'm guessing that if you're still listening to me, you have aspirations from a career standpoint that you want to leave something behind. You wanna be known for something, you wanna have that positive impact on the world. What is it that you want to be known for? So I want you to think about that. So for me, as a consultant, I didn't want to be known as somebody who went in and helped companies and put in large-scale technology systems that they then helped generate money, save money, optimize their processes or whatever it did. And then a few years later, they tore it down. They built something else because technology evolved. That wasn't the legacy I wanted to leave behind. That's a wonderful job for some people. It just wasn't what I wanted to leave behind. So I would rather touch all your souls, help you, even, even this much. Some of you I helped this much. So to me it was about reaching and helping the people and um and just and really that that's the legacy i wanted to leave that's why i've worked very hard to do this to do this so so i just i want you to keep those five things in mind and i've kind of as we wrap this up or at least the teaching portion so the first and and let's say that these are uh it's kind of a dual nature to this it's a little bit forewarning and it's a little bit encouragement. So these 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 go hand in hand and, and that kind of message should be with you the, your entire life. The first thing is I'm a, you know your impact I mean the impact that you are going to have with your gift if you manifest it in, to the proper level is going to be huge. I mean you are going to have a big big impact but what comes along with big big impacts you don't get any of those big big size rewards for free you're always going to have huge hurdles you're going to have big challenges you are going to have failures you are going to have failures and those failures should be something that you embrace as part of the process trust me when i tell you that there is a lot of invisible work that goes into this and you might be surprised at it but i think you will really be surprised if you looked over my shoulder to see how big i fail actually you probably would be even more surprised not to see how big the crashes are but the frequency in which it happens but that's just part of the journey that always helps me get better it helps me teach you better it connects me to you better and you have to embrace those kind of things okay it's the first part second thing is i'm a i'm a big steve harvey fan i love the guy i think he's smart i think he works hard i think he's very funny and that combination to me makes him very you know easy to listen to fun to watch uh i, I just got one of his books i can't wait to read it and he said, now I, I don't think that he was the originator of this, but he was the first person that I heard say this, so I'm gonna give him credit. He said that your gift is the thing you do the best with the least amount of effort. Your gift is the thing you do best with the least amount of effort. 
And that statement by itself, I agree with. I agree with. But, but, if you want to offer up your gift to this world in its biggest form, if you want to manifest your gift to the level in which it deserves to be manifested, the least amount of effort isn't going to get you there. It isn't. It isn't. It's going to take a lot more. It's going to take a lot more. So I don't want you to look for the least amount of effort. I don't want you to ask yourself, what's the least I can do? You're going to need to ask yourself, and here's kind of the challenge for you. What is the most I can endure? What is the most I can endure? That's going to be part of the success formula. It's going to be part of manifesting your gift. What is the most I can endure? So, I mean, this world needs more of you, not less. There are people that are out there that need you to do what you ache to do. That's the part of you you need to give them. That's the part of you I would love to see. And that's the part of you the world wants. That's the part of you the world wants. So I hope that serves you. I hope that gave you some kind of context about how I look at finding my gift and then and then nurturing it, right? But but first thing first, I hope that helps you find it. And I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you're here with me live, we're going to go to the chat. I'm going to see what you thought of it. If you are here on the recording, uh, I'll actually, I'm going to see you tomorrow uh, with, with another one. We're going to talk more about energy and what energizes you. But, uh, but I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I hope we're all, all good here. I'm, I'm using some new software today. Um, but I, I really, uh, you know, I really, uh, really enjoyed sharing that with you and, and a little piece of me too. So, um, so let's get into the, let's get, uh, you know, 15 minutes, I guess. Let's get into the chat. I want to see, um, let's see. Oh God, this is, so I'm using this new tool. Uh, and actually I want to thank, just so you guys know, I want to thank my community. <laughs> I want to thank my community uh, for helping me test some of this stuff out last weekend. I, uh, I, I did a number of runs. Hopefully everything went great and the audio was good and nothing was going off. My screen was flashing at me a few times, but I think I got it all. I think I got it all in an order. So let's go to the chat. Uh, Kara told me the sound had a few problems, but overall okay. Huh. All right. Let's, uh, sound cuts out a few times and is a bit choppy. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome, Rachel. Uh, let me see. You know, we're working with the software vendor on this. It happened the other day, and I'm wondering about that. But uh, all right. James Palmer got here early, 8.33, two and a half hours early. I, I, I love it. Hi again, it's from Gainesville, Georgia. What if your gift isn't something you like to do? Hang on, I want to try to do something. Um, I don't know if I can. Let me see if I can get back to the beginning because I should be able to. Um, let me see if I can. Hang on, guys. I'm trying to get back to the beginning, but I can't seem to do that. And theoretically, I should be able to add your comments to the screen, which I would love to do. Um, but I can't seem to do that. Hang on. I'm just... I, I miss James. I think he was a little too early. Uh, but anyway, James, your gift will be something that you like to do. It won't be your gift if you don't, if you don't love it. That's just plain and simple. And on the first part of your question about what if what if it's something that no one will pay you a living wage to do your gift so a couple things on this and i mean this this is the cold hard truth your gift is something that people are willing to pay the real problem for most people is they're not willing to put in the hard work or make the sacrifices to manifest their gifts to make it a business that is what i truly believe now to pull back a little bit and recognize that not everybody is going to be able to throw caution to the wind and, and, and build a business like I did, um, I think that you should look through that common thread that I talked about. So I, I showed you that mine was about teaching. Mine was about teaching. Well, as long as you know what your gift is, if you, even if you don't want to manifest it at its highest level, but you want to make sure that it's a big part of what you do every day, then I would be looking 
for a job. So if it was me, for example, and I did not have my business, but I love the teaching aspect, I would make sure that whatever job I had or whatever company I was working at or whatever my position or service was, that I was doing something where I could teach people. You need to look for that analogy for you, for you. So that's that's what I would say there. Let's keep going on. Pillafompi, I think when you find your gift, you will love it. That's true. Let me see if I can go over here and do this. Um, otherwise, it's not really a gift. That's true. Connie Cotter, how you doing? Connie, you're a triple threat. Super stoked. Um, actually, you know what? I totally forgot. I just want to say this really quick. Um, and if you, hopefully, um, hopefully you can see this. But uh, in, the, in the upper right, Kara, just let me know if it's not there. Uh, I have a leadership program that is starting on Thursday. Uh, I'm not going to show it to you or whatever. I just want to make an announcement that it's available. It's an inaugural monthly membership. This is the lowest rate it's going to be offered at. It's $49 a month. And if you want to jump in, we're going to talk about leadership topics. So think about... Okay, Kara's... In the upper right-hand corner of your screen, there's an I there. If you are interested in checking out my leadership monthly program, just click the I, it'll take you to the page. And it starts on Thursday. There's a special. It's $49 a month. It costs you $49. For that $49, you get to come. You get the library, all the stuff. You get my career accelerator program, which is my five module, $400 course. And you get it all and you get it right away as soon as you enroll. So it's an enticement because I'm super giddy because we're going to be teaching you uh, this first session is on building your confidence, but the entire program is centered around leadership development, people management, organizational management, confidence, influence, communication, goal setting, goal accomplishing, all the things that you can think of that it takes to be a great leader once a month. That's what we're focusing on. You can check the page. It's in the card. Kara can add it to the, um, can add it to the chat. If you are a boot camper, do not use that. You get a special boot camper discount. And these, these monthly enrollments are good, good till you cancel. So you can have Andy Flicks, like Netflix, every month, but, but I won't raise the price on you. Once you're in, that's your offer, and you keep it, and it's good till you cancel it. So if you're on the fence, the Career Accelerator program at least pays for eight months of, uh, of, of, of this, this subscription. So I hope you check it out. You get until Thursday at 4 p.m. Central. You can enroll right up until the first class. So just want to let you know that. And uh, you know what? I was so excited to get to your questions, I forgot to mention it. So I hope you don't mind mentioning that. Let's see. Let me go back here. I'm going to try this a little differently. Jessica, how you doing? She's a boot camper. Uh, if you are not a leader, if you jump in front of a running pack, that's, well, that's kind of true. Uh, Brooke, great to see you, my boot camper friend. And Kathy M is a triple threat. Danny's a boot camper. How are you? Hi, Christy. How you doing from Dubai? Jez, how you doing? Cindy, how are you? Steve's in this chat all over the place, my, my Canadian friend. Russ, how are you? Okay, wait. Cindy? Cindy's got a question. Let me see if I can do this. All right. There's Cindy's question. Look at Cindy's cute picture. I know what my gifts and passions are, but I'm so unsure how to identify, match those to the right company role. All right, let's take that off. Um, so I know what my gifts and passions are, but I'm so unsure how to identify it, match those to the right company and role. City, the good thing for you is, uh, well, you're in the boot camp, but for everybody who's not, there is a an exercise that I show you how to do this. It's called uh, it's a video called How to Choose the Right Job. If you follow that exercise, I w literally walk you through in that video that I released last month or month before. I literally walk you through how you match that. So in as you develop your criteria of the things that are important to you, your gift will permeate through that. So for me, there would have been a coaching or mentoring or teaching element or all that good stuff in my list, in my list of requirements. So uh, in doing so, that'll help you prioritize it properly, look for it properly. You'll know what questions to ask uh, the employer, Cindy, and that will give you a leg up for everybody. If you have not gone through that exercise, the boot campers, that's all through session one. 
So Cindy, maybe revisit that. But if, if you do not have access to that program, there is an abridged version of that in how to choose the right job. So I would, I would definitely look at that. It should come through. It should come through. Manisha, how are you? Ina, how are you? Boot campers, I love this. All right, Christy B. I know what I love to do in my job, but my role is so general that it's difficult to only focus on one item. How, if possible, can I swing a generic uh, role into a specialist position? All right, let me see. If, I just want to see this really quick. Okay, kind of, kind of. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's let's give everybody this and we'll pull it up. I know what I love to do in my job, but my role is so general that it's difficult to only focus on one item. How, if possible, can I swing a generic role into a specialist position? Okay, so here's what I always tell people. So you got 160 some right hours in a week, right? You spend 40 of them at work. First thing is you wanna make sure that you are getting engaged with whoever it is that is your boss or your manager team and you are expressing interest in certain things that are more important to you. So that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. So number one, there's communication and you gotta let them know what you favor. Then you want to work with them to try to accommodate that. But I realize that you can't always do that, that, that you can't always change your role. And it, it just maybe it is versatile. It's general. They need you to do 18 things. Maybe, you know, people that are office administrators, uh, executive assistants, folks like that. You got all kinds of things that you're doing regardless. The other thing that I suggest, though, if you can if you can get your your generalist position narrowed down through the communication. Great. If you cannot and there are areas of interest that you want to specialize in, then you got to go outside and get that help. Remember, you got 160 some odd hours. You only spend so many of them at work. There's nothing preventing any of you. Here again, sacrifice, manifestation, and all that good stuff requires extra work, right? So all of us have to sacrifice in order to become better at what it is that we love because it takes practice, it takes research, it takes trial and error, it takes all kinds of things. So I want to make sure that you know that a lot of times people limit their thinking to, well, this is what my company is willing to give me in the way of opportunity. There's nothing preventing you, um, you know what I mean, from going out and, uh, and, and, and doing some extra work on your own. And if you are, I don't know, um, uh, Kirsty, if you are in my Master Your Craft if you're taking the Master Your Craft Challenge, uh, but I would highly recommend that because it teaches you how to go outside and get that stuff. It's about how the best become the best, how they stay that way, but basically there's a formula for that. And there's a couple of parts in there that I talk about identifying the right capabilities and building your Franken mentor and educating yourself and all that good stuff. So I would that's where I would go with that. Um, Dan a formula for learning how to speak confidently and yes our beloved Danny that's Dee Dee is a boot camper so one of the things that I, I by the way I don't know if you guys know this I have a I have a a, a video out there if you're interviewing on job interview confidence and and I have an article yes remember those I have hundreds of articles that I actually wrote on andrewlasavita.com and one of those articles is seven points or wait seven steps to get your point across but basically uh kara i don't know if you find that really quick but if you can can you put that in the um in the uh in the chat because there are oh, sorry it's called seven essentials to get your point across the article itself is on my blog it is about communicating in a manner that is influential and will convince the other parties, this is more business atmosphere, we don't want you to be like hoodwinking and be Svengali or anything, uh, but but really just to try to speak in a convincing manner. Uh, and Danny, if you look at that, your confidence uh, will grow if you follow that formula. It can't but help grow. And there's a formula to speaking and telling your story or making your point or whatever in a convincing fashion. And there's elements to the story. There's elements about how you structure and the sequence in which you say things. All that's in the article. I would direct you to that. I think you'll really enjoy it. It'll only take a few minutes to read it, but it, it's a phenomenal checklist uh, for, uh, for, that, for that. So I would, uh, yes. So yes, there's a formula and yes, I would go there and get it. 
So I hope that helps. Melanie, how you doing? Carl? Bruce? Don. Don's my boot camper. Don, we need you in the leadership program, man. Come on, you know you want to be a triple threat. Carrie, how you doing? You have me on, on mute? Oh. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Dude, you're, you're a good dude. Kathleen, how are you? My, our, one of our newer boot campers. Julio from Portugal, please do not send me any more pictures that make me jealous of your gorgeous weather. Thank you. Ha, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm 52, I feel 25. I'm not kidding you. Actually, tomorrow, and you're not gonna get, by the way, if you, okay, so you know we're going like three days in a row. Tomorrow's on energy. I'm not giving you my total formula of, of how I maintain this level of energy, but I'm gonna give you my trick for your work day and how I do not accumulate stress, how my energy is always high. I'm giving you all that tomorrow. So I hope, uh, I hope you, you guys join me for that. Ooh, this is a good one. Uh, for those of you, that, that's Julio. He's very handsome. Um, the, for the Danny, Postman is a great place for you guys to, uh, for you guys to check out. So, so that's, that's kind of a, a pretty good one. Um, all right. Jelena, Helena, maybe? Hello, Andy. I'm from Serbia. Highly educated. So on and so forth. Let me see. Let me get, try to post this up here. Okay. Hello, Andy. I am from Serbia and highly educated with four master's degrees and over 15 years of experience in pharma. Trying to find a job abroad, but companies refuse to sponsor working visas. What can I do? Okay. So we get this question a lot because why? That's hard, right? So the working visa element the working the component means you cost more. So you got to get creative. Now, there's a couple of different paths you can follow. I would do all of these. Okay, the first thing is you need to be upfront that you, you require a visa because it's going to come out eventually and companies are going to be bummed if they take you through the whole process and you don't, you don't actually, you know, you get down to the end and they realize they're going to have to pay for your visa and there's various kinds of visas, but they're generally expensive. So that means your price tag is higher, which means you have to bring more to the table. So number one is you need to be open about it. And number two, you're really going to have to work hard at, at uh, highlighting your specific and unique skill sets. That's one route. That's a harder route, right? You can do that in your resume. You can do that in your cover letter. You can do that in your communications and your emails and so on. You can try to build a network wherever it is you're going, whether you're going, you know, across the town or whether you're going into a new, a new country. Uh, but you can you can try to uh, I would check out my job search networking videos uh, for that because that might help uh, if you could build some relationships where you're going. But the 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 path that I think is the one that I I saved this one for last because I actually think it's the best is and I don't know your timing and why you need to to move or why you're looking for jobs in different in a different country. But the one thing I always recommend, and I'm recommending this now with the state of the employment market, uh, because it's very healthy. It actually is an employee employee's market, but employers can be very, very picky with the people that they're hiring. So there's this, there's this, you know, neutrality almost. So what I recommend is, is it possible for you to look for an opportunity in your current country that's an international company that might be able to transfer you at some point in the near future if you do well? Here again, I say that because I think that's your best option considering the, the um, competition in the market and the additional expense that you're going to incur. But if you can get your foot in with an organization that is in your local area, then I think you're gonna I, I think you're gonna have a better shot that way and then get transferred somewhere. And a company who knows you and knows your value and knows what you can contribute would be more apt to get you that visa if you needed to. That's what I would try. I mean, you gotta be a little creative here because it's not the best scenario. So I hope that helped you. All right. Carrie, Connie. Oh, hey mom, how you doing? Puspenda, you're welcome. I think I just got that. 
Kathleen, yes, you're an Andy addict. I love it. I think you got in the leadership program. If you didn't, please do. Enola, how you doing? Kevin, how you doing, buddy? Kara, do me a favor. Let me know. Uh, let me know if um, I, I hope I'm, I'm looking in a different spot for the chat. So I hope the uh, I hope the audio is okay, and I hope uh, I hope I'm not missing anybody. Dan, you're welcome. Audio went in and out a bit. I'm wondering why that is. Uh, Lena, this is a good one. Got a third interview, and they want a presentation on best practices in learning and development. Got a and they want a presentation in learning and development. Okay, so, Lena. First thing I would do is I would make sure I watched my second job interview video. That's a good one. Uh, even though this is your third interview, it's still okay. Same principles ap apply. You want to, to build a presentation that obviously highlights the best practices. The best way to do that is you want to make sure that it is organizationally, it goes from top down. You want to explain to them why you chose the best practices that you've highlighted. And you need to make sure that you justify and teach not only what the practice is, but why it's a best practice. Because... To, to really drive home evidence. You know on your resume, I always tell you things like, I want you to make sure that you are highlighting not just what you do, but what happened as a result of what you do, the accomplishment, the impact, the benefit, and so on. When you're giving a presentation and you're, you're offering up what you think the best practices are, how you would go about these best practices, you also want to provide evidence that you chose these because of these impacts that these practices have had. You do that, I guarantee you people will not do that. I guarantee you that people will come in and they will just talk about what the best practices are. But if you tack on at the end, and here's the evidence of why, in my opinion, I have filtered the other practices out down to these, if you show evidence of the fact, that will win you the day. Promise. And I would love to know how that turned out. So drop it on my YouTube channel, whether here or anywhere else, and let me know. And let me know. Okay, hope that helps. All right. Alan, you're welcome. Crypto, you're welcome. Mark, how you doing, bud? Kathy. All right, let me see if I can get this up here. Kathy said, do you agree that if you are using your gift, then I think you don't realize the great amount of effort that you actually use because it seems like fun rather than work? Kathy? I would love to give you a huge high five, and let me tell you why. Uh, I wanted to keep this talk down to about 15 minutes, and because I wanted to, I, 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 we're going to be on an hour, uh, just simply because of my schedule, and I wanted to make sure that the education portion was 15 minutes, and that I saved a bunch of time, you know, a couple minutes to let you know about the leadership monthly, and then and then a good portion for your Q and A because I know that's one of the big reasons people come to these. One of the things that I omitted is other elements that you can look at to help you understand that you are uh, really in the zone, so to speak. You know, when we do these, I have to look at the clock to make sure, and most of the time, it's way past my cut time, that my mental cut time that I had. So... Definitely, it will appear as though this is fun, this is a great thing, you will lose track of time, you will get lost in it. So when you become, you know, when you don't have, a, when you're not conscious of time and you're in the middle of doing something that you enjoy, time will fly. And that is an element that I also think is incredibly a great characteristic of the fact that you are doing what you love. And I mean, I, I could go all day. I love doing it and I love helping you and you guys are great and and you know I it drives me gives me energy plus you give me good feedback that it's helping you and so I lose track of time so yes I think that's an, a phenomenal point and um and I think you said you know lately and you, you had a little tack on there that you're noticing this and I think that there's absolutely no doubt no doubt whatsoever 
So uh, this is a great one here. I can't, I forgive me. I'm not sure how to, and I hope you're not biting something there, uh, how to pronounce your name, but hi, can you please go over the main questions one should ask himself? So I think that you should think about what energize, so kind of going back to the talk, what energizes me, right? What, what, what do I love to do that will benefit others, right? So that was the second, the second point. What kind of legacy do I, am I going to leave? What do I want to be known for? You know, all that good stuff. What, what are others telling me that I'm good at? So I, I think those are five, five good questions right there that you can ask yourself. And I think what Kathy just said is a great question. What do I do where I seem, what are the things that I do where I seem to lose track of time? You could even try to isolate. We're working these days. You know, what is it that, uh, where I lose track of time? So I think that's a great question too. So, I mean, I, I think, I hope those serve you. I think that is, um, that's great. All right. Latia. Oh, you don't have to apologize. You don't have to apologize at all. You can ask, these are ask me anything questions. All right. Let's see. Apologies is unrelated to the topic. No need to apologize. I would really appreciate your input. I have an all day interview, seven meetings with 12 people. Any recommendations on how to approach it? So this is a, uh, a big wide open question. And it's difficult. I mean, I could spend the next hour giving you all the pointers, but here's what I would say, you know, kind of just a few, a few pointers. The first thing is you got a lot of people that you're going to be interacting with. The beauty of that is you get an opportunity. So, so I could, I could teach all the different interviewing techniques and all that good stuff. And I would highly recommend watching three keys to ace any job interview. That'll help you with delivering your stories and all that good stuff. So I'm not going to give you tips on that because you there's assets out there that you can grab. This is what I want to share because of the format you told me it was going to be in that was going to be all day. It's going to be 12 people. You got seven meetings. I want to focus on that element. If you have identified your criteria of the things that are important to you. So going back to one of those earlier videos I recommended, uh, how to choose the right job. I walk you through how to identify the criteria and your criteria and the things that are important to you. The reason that you need to do that is because you are also evaluating the company to determine if it's a good company for you. When you identify that criteria, you should respectively identify questions that you want to ask the employer to make sure that the employer can satisfy your criteria so that you're getting information to know that this is a good fit for you. As you go through your day, you want to make sure the first across uh, the different interviewers, across the different interviewers. And meaning, ask you know, the top ones to the management team, you know, these more to your peers, these to your customers, these to the HR people, and so on. That way you're getting, you're getting a, 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 cross, a cross section of all of your questions. You're not asking the same questions to everybody and you're gathering more data. That's the first tip. Second thing is there's nothing wrong with asking the same question to a couple of different people to make sure that there is a consistency in what it is they're going uh, to do. You know, what, how they think about it, how they're approaching it, are their cones all pointed in the same direction? And it's okay for you to say, hey, uh, you know, I asked so-and-so this in the previous interview and I, I, I really liked that she said this. I'd love to understand your opinion on this and how you see it. It's okay to do that. So there's some of that. Uh, but I, I think a lot of it is, you know, making sure that you're, you are telling your stories effectively, you're answering the questions the right way. The, the webinar, the free webinar I mentioned will help you do that. But I think, you know, the one or two big tips I would make sure is that uh, I would plan my questions appropriately because you can get exhausted when you're going one after another like that. And I would do my best just from an energy perspective as you break in between you know, kind of close your eyes, catch your breath, actually close your eyes if you can go into the restroom and take some deep breaths. The closing of the eyes does wonderful things to your cortex and it, it, it literally will, will relieve some of your stress and then you go into the next one and so on. I can go all day long about how to make it through a day like that. But that's, those are the, those are the tips I'd give you and I, I hope that works out well. I mean, it sounds great and lots of luck to you. All right, D. Rowley, great to see you. Triple threat right there. Daryl, what do we got here? All right, let's get this up on the screen. 
All right. So, Daryl, screening status related to a job competition on a company website has not changed. Wait, screening status? I, uh, I'm not really sure what this lingo is, but should I contact the HR manager? Should I contact the manager or HR to find out about the status of my application? Yes. Yes, I, I, you know, if, uh, you know, if, if, you know, February 21st is, um, you know, what is that? Like three, four weeks ago. So yes, it could just be sitting idle. I'm, I would try to get directly to somebody. All right. Wendy, my boot camper. Hi everyone. Boot camper. Yes, you are in the leadership monthly program. I love it. All right. Multiple gifts can cause, oops, indecision. Does the gift have to be fully aligned with an opportunity? No, I think I think you can have multiple gifts. I think we all have multiple gifts. I think one gift supersedes everything and then a lot of the other gifts are kind of they're along for the along for the ride, right? I feel like to give you an example, uh, my I think my well you you could disagree with me. I'm telling you based on the feedback that I get from others. You know, I think my gift is helping people. But I also think a gift that I have when I'm engaged with somebody is making them feel good about themselves and making them feel confident in those in, in, in those kind of things too. Very gift. But, um, uh, you know, I, I think we definitely have multiple gifts, and I, I think that all of those, if you are looking for an opportunity, uh, that I would identify all the things that you love doing and, and feel you're good at or want to get great at. And, and just because you have, I mean, your gift needs to be developed as well, right? And talk about manifesting it, highest levels, and so on. But yes, I definitely think um, there is, uh, there's no question about that. Tim, wonderful, and thank you for that. Kara, thanks for, um, you know, putting out the leadership link. Hey, Andy, in your professional opinion, do you think a C-level resume should be structured differently? Let me get this up here. This is great. All right, Alex with the nice landscaping there. Hey, Andy, in your professional opinion, do you think a C-level resume should be structured differently than a professional with less experience? Alex, I think you should get my resume template, and it doesn't matter if you're a C-level executive or not. I would use that. I would use that. We have tons of very, very senior people in our programs you know, we got a we got a chief. Uh, we had an operations person who just started a CFO position today. We have a lot of very very senior folks. They have great track record using that layout, and I don't I don't think it matters at all. It really doesn't. Now the content might be a little different. The layout, I don't think so. All right, Manisha. Dr. Manisha. Dear Andy, would you say our gifts are some of our unique skills that perhaps have gone untapped to date? I think that is, Manisha, that is a phenomenal way to say it. I truly believe, I truly believe that people do not, they, they have the gifts. What they do with them is the issue most of us face. And I think that most of your gifts are not harnessed to the level that they can be, that they can be. And so, I mean, even myself, I was not harnessing my gift to the extent that it could be. I was trapped inside a corporate job where my gift can only be realized at such a level. So I didn't, I mean, until I broke free of that, I could not manifest this to the level that in which I feel it needs to be manifested. So, but I think a lot of us face that. And I think that is part of being confined inside of a corporation. Be, and, and working for companies is awesome. But what you also have to realize is you, you need to work even harder to find a position. So that to me is, is incredibly, incredibly important. So yes, I think it goes untapped. I think people use the corporate framework as an excuse not to tap it. Or people are just not willing to sacrifice those things. Or spend time outside of work or wherever they need to in order to do that. So yes, I think that's dead on, dead on. Chris, hey Andy, great to watch you. Recently connected. Okay, wait, I think this is a question. 
All right, Chris, hi Andy, great to watch you as always. Thank you, my friend. I recently connected on LinkedIn with a director in one of the companies on my bucket list. Awesome, how do I advance the relationship? You go to, Chris, uh, I'm assuming that this person is in is a high-ranking official in the area in which you want to go to. If the person is, use the boss hunting uh, techniques. Just go to my YouTube channel, type in the search bar boss hunt, and it'll pop up. And there's downloads, and there's a couple of different uh, cover letter templates that you can use. One if you know a position exists, and one if you don't know if a position exists. So all of you, what I would say is if there's anything you're looking for, think in terms of generally how you'd ask it. Go to my YouTube channel and type it in the search bar. I mean, if you're a fan of my work, start there and 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 look that way because I probably have it resolved somewhere. There's 150 public videos on my YouTube channel. I talk a lot. There's a lot of stuff out there. I've shared a lot of stuff. So so check that out. JJ, I love this one. Hi, Andrew. How can I know which size company will best suit me? So I don't think you need to determine the size. I think you need to determine the nature of the surrounding environment. There are some small companies that act like big companies, have a ton of red tape. It's really difficult. I think there are large companies that have pockets within them that are very entrepreneurial and behave small company like. So I think it has more to do with your requirements overall. As you go through your interview process, if you've identified down to the lowest level what's important to you, that will help you evaluate whether a, this particular small company or that large company is better for you. It's true. If you go and watch how to choose the right job, I walk you through this exact formula. Uh, based on company size. I really wouldn't. But I, this much I will tell you, for those of you that are looking for work, if you are, um, you know, if you are in your search, you have a better chance of getting into a smaller company than you do into a larger company. Smaller companies are a little bit more uh, open and malleable about position types, compensation. They're a little bit more freewheeling in, in, when it comes to interviewing people and looking for opportunities to bring great people in. Larger companies have more structure. They try to thread a needle, I mean, a donut hole, you know, with a needle from a thousand yards. I mean, it's crazy. So I would always say, you know, look in small companies first and then go to the larger companies. And there's nothing wrong with going to the large companies if you see that there's an opening, but I would try the small companies first. All right, um, let's see. Bit choppy, you're welcome. Cindy, I uh, mentioned that one already. Kara, thank you. Yeah, by the way, this is pretty, this is pretty cool. There's Kara. Uh, seven essentials to make sure they never miss your point. This was in, um, uh, in um, in response to Danny's question about how to speak more confidently. So that's a great one. And Danny, you're welcome. Gary, how you doing? He's in treatment listening to me. Oh my God. Get back on track, my friend. Cindy, you're welcome. Oh, Sherry. Let's put this up. All right, Sherry. What to do when you are losing steam and when you keep interviewing for different roles with the same company? How to get back on track when told no? Recruiters keep calling me from this company. Um, so there's, I think there's a few different things here. The first thing is what to do when you're losing steam and when you, want, when you keep interviewing. You've got to look at, I think I sent this to you already, but I have a video out there about so how to stay positive in your job search. I would direct you to that. Okay, it's focusing on the right stuff. In, in, uh, if you are um, continuing to uh, interview with the same company, there obviously is something that they like about you. So, um, so anyway, I, I, I don't know what to tell you there. I mean, I don't, I, if they keep calling you from the same company, third party recruitment firm, and so, but my, my, my best suggestion would be to follow the format that I give you in that stay positive in your job search. There's different metrics that you ought to follow. It relates to the challenge. I would, I would, I would probably take a few days off 
knowing, yeah, I can say that to you, just knowing what you've been through. And I would, I would probably step back and catch my breath. And the other thing too is, um, you know, as we go through our life, you know, the, the universe knows what we're thinking. The universe knows what we're sending out there. And so, you know, sometimes we grip, I'd go through this in my business. Sometimes we grip things too tight and we just can't, you know, we need to take a step back, just catch our breath and hit the restart button and kind of look in a different in a different direction. That could be a different location. It could be different company types. It could be just don't spend a lot of time with that organization. It could be a number of things. But that's that's what I would do. I would mix it up. I would mix it up, Sherry. All right, let me see. How are we doing on time? I want to uh, I do want to make one more mention before we before we get off. Hang on, let me see if I could let me drop this down a bit. Um Okay, uh, we're back tomorrow, and we're back on Wednesday, if you're here with me live. Tomorrow's on energy management, and or basically managing your energy, not time, how to be super productive throughout the day. And then on Wednesday, we're talking about discipline and achieving, achieving your goals. Uh, the Leadership Monthly Program, check that out. That, that, that rate, that gift, all that good stuff is good till Thursday till we start. So... Um, you're not going to get a ton of sales emails from me. You're going to get the message tomorrow that we're live. You're going to get the message Wednesday that we're live. And you might get one reminder on, on Thursday and that's it. Then I start and then we're off. So if you are interested in my $400 Career Accelerator program and you want to see what the leadership stuff's all about, in the card, and uh, I, think you'll, I think you'll love it. All right, folks, I got to run. Sorry about the audio. I'm going to work with the software company and see if there's anything we can do. I need to watch the replay as well. Um, and, okay, one last question, Steve. Uh, where is this? Actually, let me let me add this. All right, let's end on this because this is a good one I want you guys to know. Andy, do you do one-on-one -on -one consulting? If yes, what is your fee for, let's say, a 30- or 60-minute chat? So I do two types of coaching. One of it is a five session, $3,000 package. The other is if you are in my job search boot camp, there is a, an a la carte session that you can buy. You need to be in the boot camp because I need to make sure that you have gone through the framework of the principles that I want to teach you. If you're in the boot camp, then you can add on a coaching session, which is done via Zoom. We do it through video. It's recorded for you. That's 500 bucks, and I only do, I do one hour, one hour plus sessions. I don't do anything shorter, uh, so I just, I don't, I, don't, I don't try to fool myself or anybody else that I'm going to fix them in a couple of minutes if they don't have the right foundational stuff. So Steve, um, we, can, we can actually send you and anybody else that wants it, if you just email support at milewalk.com or you go to the front page of the Milewalk Academy, there's a little form to fill in. We just ask you a few questions. It only takes a couple of minutes. And then, and then we will actually email you more detail on what I just said. But yeah, it's the boot camp is really the place to start because that usually resolves a lot of questions for people. And then when they go to the one-on-one -on -one with me, it's, it's very, very, very effective. So I hope that helps. Uh, we are. I need to. I need to tie it off because I gotta actually get to another meeting. But uh, I will see you guys tomorrow, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'll. I'll. Uh, I'll catch up with you guys soon. Be good. Take care.